Good morning. So I made a video the other day called Loving God. I got some time off from work. It slowed down, so I've got some free time to make videos again. And um, anyway, my last video was uh, the theme was Loving God. Instead of looking at, you know, we're kind of raised and kind of trained, I guess, when we go to church and that, to, that we pray to God for things. We pray for, you know, we pray for um, whatever like we're asking for something all the time and it's really a lower level way of interacting right i mean if we had a friend who just called us when when they needed something it wouldn't really be a very good friendship it wouldn't be something that you would um feel good about you know oh man they're calling me again what do they want so what I've learned with Sahaj Marg, and it was interesting, I was reading um, Kamwish's book. This is a great book. Um, it's called Designing Destiny. And he talks about some stuff last night that I was reading about, about humility. And I think one thing that has been the biggest thing about Sahaj Marg that's helped me the most is, is humility. And it has allowed me to basically see my life without and and what I you know am doing and and basically just accepting my life for what it is and, you know I think we get this uh, kind of this idea that we need to be doing something else all the time I have a friend at work and she was talking about how uh, or a co-worker at work how she feels like she's gonna miss out on something like she she spends all of her money and doesn't save money. We were talking about savings and stuff. And she talks about how she has to do stuff because she feels like she's going to miss out. And when she gets extra money, all she can think about is, oh, we could do a Disney cruise or we could go to Disney World or we can do this and that. Well, people do the same thing, um, I think, in every aspect of their life. They're they're basically looking looking for something all the time to give them a, you know, to and our system is designed to hook us at all these different levels, and to pull us to pull us in. Um, I mean, everything's just so addictive. The sugar, the entertainment. Um, I went to a movie with my daughters. We went and saw that 1917 movie, and it was okay. It wasn't great, but it was fun to go out with my girls. And I don't haven't been to a movie in two or three years, and. Um, Every preview was like a demonic themed movie. They were all um, demonic. It all had uh, just it was it was really evil, real like real evil stuff. And this is what's being pushed and promoted, like like it's normal, like this is good, you know. Hey, let's go watch this horrible evil movie. Well, I think you know these these negative energies are always looking for ways to hook on to us and um so humility is really great because when you when you're humble you know enough to know that you don't know you know enough to know that you don't have the ultimate authority you don't have the ultimate power that this ultimate authority and power is this godly connection and this source energy, this godly energy, is the source of all of it. And so this is what we can defer to instead of saying, oh, I have to do this and I have to do that. It doesn't mean we're lazy. But we are, in a way, surrendering. And that's a term I hate. I hate the term surrendering. But we are surrendering to this higher power. Now, how does that happen? It happens by building trust and it happens over time and there's things that will happen in your life as you're moving along your path your experiences will change you'll have epiphanies God will show you things will give you insights will give you information if you're paying attention and all these little things will add up and over time you've built this really really beautiful um, this really really beautiful relationship with God this source whatever you want to call it 
the source of everything. And, um, and that's like the first step to a relationship is getting to know each other. It's like you're getting to know this, this, I don't even want to call it energy. You're, you're getting to know this personality, I guess, but it's not a personality. I don't even know. It's God is something very amazing. You know, we can't know. Our mind, Kamlesh teaches us, teaches us this. Our mind is incapable of knowing God. Only our heart is able to expand to that level. And it's about just expansion. You know, expanding to that level. And it takes time. It's becoming, it's like becoming a deep sea diver. You go down, you go back up, you go down, you go back up. You keep going down farther and farther and farther. And, um... Or, you know, when you're acclimating to a climb, you you're climb up and then you come back down to base camp and then you go up a little farther and come back down to base camp. You build up your reserves, you build up your, you know, red blood cells, you build up all your, um, so you don't get sick. And the spiritual path is no different. We're building up our reserves by expanding the heart, letting the heart expand. We're being, we're opening, we're opening to this relationship and that's what it is it's a relationship and just like any relationship it has to develop it has to be um, organic it has to it happens over time what I'm finding is this relationship that I'm developing with God is becoming more and more real to me all the time I I feel God coming into me all the time I feel this connection I guess you could say and um more and more and more and more and it's really beautiful and I think when I started doing first started doing massage market it was about two years ago I think I want to say it was two years ago 2017 February of 2017 January February it feels like I've been doing a lot longer but I had some experiences when I first started and I was kind of like shocked because I was like I asked I asked what, you know, I asked the question when I'd meditate, I'd say, God, you know, what are you? You know, what, what is God? What is this thing we're calling God? And I had some experiences of just incredible clarity, like just this, um, this expansion, this, this, I don't even, to say clarity is like an understatement, crystal clear, like, the clearest, most um, pure thing you can think of. That's That was my experience of God. It wasn't some bright light or some guy with a beard. And I'm not saying that's God. I'm saying that's an aspect of God maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But I was shown something because I asked. And I had another experience where I, this is one I alluded to in my other talk about um, when I learned to meditate. And I had an experience with Kamlish in my meditation and I received transmission from him in my meditation and it was really unbelievable I mean it just it blew me away it was like um, nothing I could ever I, I couldn't even imagine and what it was is Kamlesh was in front of me and behind him was this wall of I, I, I call it love it was a wall of love it was like a tsunami wave of love it was so big, it was so incomprehensibly powerful that it just, it was like, um, and then when I received the transmission from Kamlish, it was like attenuated because had, had he really let, let it rip with that full power of that love, I mean, it would have been too much for me, right? And that's not how God works. God only brings you what you can take. And um, honestly, at that moment, I couldn't take very much. It was, it was a, a power that um, I can't even describe. It was something that powerful. And um, I had a lot of realizations from that experience, a lot of things that really, you know, that was the, my initial like, wow, okay, this is real. I'm not imagining things. There is a godly energy. There is a love that is like massive, massive. And um, so another experience I had was at work. 
I had a very tragic, it turned out not to be tragic. Um, we had a, a mother who had a rupture, um, a placental abruption, and the baby came out, the baby came out dead, and we had to resuscitate the baby. And it was very traumatic because it was one of our coworkers. And um, we got the baby back, but, you know, a situation like that, you pretty much, you know, think the baby's going to be brain dead. It's going to be, you know, it's not going to survive. And I went through all these conflicting emotions. I thought, God, you know, what have we done? You know, we, we're just going to cause this, the parents more suffering. And, um, you know, we did our job. We resuscitated the baby, but I, I couldn't feel joy about it because I was like, oh my God, what have we done? You know, it's kind of like, wow, you know, now we're just going to make them suffer for longer, make them draw out the suffering. And I was like, I mean, I was weeping about it. I couldn't talk about it to coworkers without weeping. I've never been affected like that. And I worked in a trauma unit for eight years and saw horrible things every day. And nothing affected me like this. So I was, you know, really distraught. And I was, uh, I was getting on the elevator. And I was just this, it was kind of off to the side. But it was this love, the same love that I had received from Kamwish. It was the same love that was behind him. But it was kind of off to the side and it was uh, in my mind, I just, it was kind of, it wasn't like over, it wasn't on top of me or anything like that. It was just kind of off to the side. And in my mind, it was, it was as it, it was like it said, we've got this. Basically, you don't have to worry about this. We're going to take care of it. And I was like, whoa. But of course, you know, I still had my doubts. I still worried. But you know what? That baby is growing now and is healthy and has some deficits, uh, has to wear hearing aids and has a little bit of um, weakness on one of its sides. But this baby was dead, not alive. I mean, it had catastrophic uh, event that really, I mean, the baby really should have been brain dead at this point. And um, the fact that this baby came back, I mean, it was a miracle. And uh, anyway, so that was another experience I had. But then there's all these little things that happen all the time. These little, um, we get these little pieces of information, these little supports, these little things that come. I've been noticing um, when I did TM, people called it supportive nature. I don't like that. I don't like that terminology. It's very, um, it's a very disconnected kind of thing. This godly energy is with us and it's intimately connected to us we are it actually and it is it, it cares for us in ways that i don't think we can even understand the the level of love that's available to us and so you know i think the theme for you know our lives as we as we become more mature starts to become how how do i how do i take in more of this love how do i give more of this love how do i learn about this love how do i become more receptive and um one thing i've been going through the last few days is realizing that i don't have to wait until meditation to receive transmission i can receive transmission anytime i want it's infinite there's infinite amount of this it's not like you get, uh, it's not like you get rationed a certain amount of love. You get this as much as you want to take in. How much can you take? How much can you absorb? How much can you take in? And I, I think that's really the goal, right? I mean, the goal is just to figure out this love thing. Love is the, is the big giant question mark. What is it? Where does it come from? What's the source of it? What is, what is the nature of this love? 
How can we become more loving? How can we accept more love? And, I mean, that becomes the goal of life. I mean, that's the great mystery. You know, you're like a, a scientific explorer. You're, 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 it's the best of all worlds. You're, you're um, delving into, these, into this thing. And your old patterns and all these things. Stop looking at those things like there's some kind of negative. Those things are there to help you. It, it's like a it's like a river, you know. It has rocks and boulders in it. It makes the water jump up and down and move around, and it just makes it so beautiful. I mean, what's more beautiful than a waterfall? You know, that godly energy pouring over that. Um, what we consider to be the impurities and the, the negativities of our system. What's more beautiful than that godly energy just washing through it and just washing through it and just turning all of those sharp edges into these smooth, beautiful gems, these sm smooth, beautiful creations. I mean, our, our experiences have to be worth something. You know, you know they talk about warning against you know accumulating some scars and all that but the reality is once you start on the path those some scars are being removed 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 it's like it's like uh it's inevitable we're going to be cleaned off completely cleaned off and that is the uh final destination is this this point of clarity this point of complete clarity there's no separation anymore between you and god it's just uh, an, a, a joint venture you're completely connected to God all the time and there's no limiting factor to it there's no limit to how far you can go with it you know um, Babaji talks about basically you know the guide is guiding you to this edge but they can't take you all the way in because it's an individual it's an individual thing it, it, it just expands for infinite I don't even know what that means but I got some glimpses of it. And it's really, really exciting. I mean, there's nothing more exciting than that, than this journey, this adventure. And I guess I'll just leave it there for today. Hope you all have a good day.